Hi everyone, I hope you're doing okay. Uh, welcome to number three from the Supple Spines series. Um, we're going to be warming up the wrists to start with. As you can see, I've started in a kneeling position, but you could start in standing if you want to, and then come down into four point kneeling uh, when I do. So find a nice long spine wherever you have started and let's bend the elbows and create some little fists. We're gonna draw some circles. And if you were wearing a watch, you'd want the clock or the watch face to be pointing up throughout. It just means that the movement isn't then coming through the elbow. Take your circle the other way. And then from here, we're gonna clasp the hands together and draw what looks a bit like a figure of eight. Don't panic too much if it doesn't, but all we're trying to do is get some movement into those wrists. Then we're going to flatten out the hands, palms turned down and see if you can direct the fingertips out to the sides, essentially creating a little uh, bend on the outer edge of the wrist and then try and bring those fingertips to point inwards towards each other and then go again. Last ones, and then you're going to just rotate so the palms are turned up and rotate, palms turned down. Just do a few of those. And then release. So let's turn the head from one side to the other. You may be using this video today as a standalone one. So we're just getting a bit of warmth through certain parts of the body before moving through the bigger exercises. And for those, this may be your third one in your little sequence. So you may find that there's a bit of a crossover of some of the exercises. Last ones. And then let's bring your ear to the shoulder, return the head up and over to the other side. Try to keep the shoulders level. Just watch if one shoulder is dropping down Last ones. And then finally, a chin tuck. So we're gonna tuck the chin back into itself. Give yourself a double chin. It's really glamorous. And then release and allow the chin to lift. And then go again. So we're gonna press the skull back, tucking the chin in. And then release, allow the chin to lift. A really important one for posture. Imagine that the base of your skull is sliding up that wall behind you and that's why the chin drops back into itself. Last one. And then release. Okay, we're gonna come down into four point kneeling. Um, if you're quite sensitive on the wrists, try to be on palms for this particular exercise. And then you could change it up into knuckles. Or if you need to, you could get a couple of cushions and pop your hands on the front edge of that cushion so that you're not putting such an extreme bend into the wrist. Aim to have the knees underneath the hips and wrist underneath shoulders, give or take, so maybe slightly further forwards. And we want to find that neutral spine. So let's just do a little tuck of the pelvis and then stick your bottom out. Very small work, just to bring your attention to that part of your body. Back of the skull is pressed to the ceiling, collarbones are wide, and you're pushing away from the mat with those hands. So let's settle the pelvis somewhere in the middle of those two points so that the hip bones are pointing directly down, your sacrum is flat to the ceiling. Tummy gently drawn to the spine. So from here, we're gonna take a breath in. As you breathe out, send your bottom back to the wall behind you. Avoid it going low to your heels. Try to keep your torso at the same point throughout and then inhale to return shoulders over wrists and then go again. So this is called four point rocking. It's designed to get movement through your hips, some small work through your knees, through your shoulders, through your wrists, and the spine and pelvis are actually staying still at the moment. As you go back, maybe think of sticking your bottom out a little bit more so you can deepen the crease at the front of the hip. If you feel like you need a bit of feedback, maybe do this exercise in front of a mirror or your reflection um, so that you can actually get um, a visual feedback 
as to where you are in space. I'm going to go for one more. Return. Rest off those wrists as and when you need to. Feel free to um, do any of those wrist warm-up exercises and then join in when you're ready. For cat, take a breath in as you breathe out, tuck your bottom under, draw tummy towards the spine, let it ripple through and finish looking towards those thighs. Breathe in to hold your position, breathe out to release, sending the tailbone away from the crown of the head and then go again. So for our cats today, I want you to really focus on the movement in the lower back. It's very easy for us to flex into the upper back and push up in towards those shoulders. So let's focus it on the lumbar, which doesn't really like to flex that much. So in some ways it becomes a bit more of a flat cat, more of a balanced curve. Let's just go for one more. And then we're going to link rocking that previous exercise to cat. So to start with, keep yourself in a neutral position. No, that's a total lie. We're going to come up into cat. We'll do it this way first. Find your cat shape. And then you're going to kneel back halfway. So we're not going to go all the way to the heels. The arms stay nice and straight. Now, whilst you're back there, send your bottom back to the wall behind you. You're unraveling the spine. The skull presses to the ceiling. And there's your four point rocking position. Return your weight forwards and then you're ready to go again. So we're going to tuck under, find your cat. Try and keep your rounded shape as you kneel back part way, and then send your bottom back, lengthening out the spine. Don't forget to uh, move the skull back into place first and then rock forwards. One more. So now we're going to reverse it. So keeping your rocking parallel, your spinal position the same, you're going to rock back. And now tuck your bottom under, rounding the spine into a cat whilst you're back there. And then keep your cat as you return forwards. And then lengthen out, finding your neutral spine. So keep neutral as you go back. Tuck your bottom under, draw tummy to spine rounding through so that you're looking to the thighs and then keep that as you return forwards and then lengthen out one more time well done once you've done your last one feel free to kneel back give those wrists a bit of a circle And then return to four point kneeling, this time for what's called a swishy cat. So you're going to essentially wag your tail from side to side. And what's happening here is you're laterally flexing the spine. It's creating little side bends, mainly through the lumbar, the lower back. Now, once you feel like you've got it, it's, I feel that it's easier to start with the movement quicker and then gradually start to slow it down. You can start to smooth it out, make it a bit more juicy exaggerate it slightly and as you bring your hip up to meet one armpit shortening the side of the waist you can encourage the ear to come down to that armpit so that you're creating a side bend all the way down one side of the body when you swish your tail around to the other side you're bringing your ear to that side as well so avoid looking back to the shoulder your nose stays looking towards the ground throughout and you're creating a little side bend in the neck and the side bend through the lower spine. Keep pressing the back of the skull to the ceiling. Draw tummy to spine. Push away from the mat with those hands. I'm gonna go for our last ones on each side. Even yourself up. And then from here, again, kneel back and give your wrists a bit of a circle. Okay. From here, we're going to come and lay down on your tummy. 
Now, if you've got a sensitive back, you may need a thinnish cushion. Don't use anything thicker than this. Um, so maybe fold up a little towel um, uh, as we're going to do some extension work. You may find you don't need one at all. So that's absolutely fine. Don't feel like you need to use it. I know for my back, I need it. It's gonna, if you are going to use a cushion, it's underneath your pubic bone and hip bones. It's not rib cage tummy. We're going to take the legs slightly wider with the heels facing in, toes facing out. And then have your hands in what looks like a goal posts position with the rib cage tucking in and underneath you and your forehead down. So from here, we're gonna move into cobra prep. Keep your belly button gently lifted towards the spine. And before you do any movement, have a little tuck of the pelvis, a bit like the start of a cat. And that's just gonna help keep your lumbar spine nice and open. From here, we take a breath in. As you breathe out, let your head lift off the ground. Keep looking down towards the floor as your chest shines forwards and the elbows stay on the mat. Breathe in to hold your extension and then breathe out to return back down. And then go again when you're ready. Now, there should be no pain in the lower back, none whatsoever. So if there is, it's probably a positional thing. So I would stop the exercise, have a little rest, and then just check in with your position. So as you come up into this uh, cobra prep, just notice if you've collapsed into your lower back or have you still got your tummy lifted towards your spine? And are you still keeping that little tuck of your pelvis so that your hip bones remain pointing to the mat rather than um, the pelvis kind of tipping and the lower back getting a chance to compress. Now for some of you, this will feel the right stage. So please stay with this. Those that would like to progress it to a full cobra, we come up as far as we can with the elbows down. And then when we can't go any further, we push into the hands to allow the elbows to peel off the floor and come up into a top extension. Breathe in to hold up at the top and then breathe out to return all the way back down. And then go again. We want to avoid the shoulders being up by the ears. So keep stretching out through the head and neck. Allow the breastbone to look forwards as when we come up to here, sometimes we can round the upper back. So keep trying to push the chest forwards. Breathe in to hold up at the top and then return back down. One more time, please. Well done. Once you've done your last one, either rest on your tummy, head on hands, or those that can, push yourself back into child's pose. See if you can sink your bottom down towards your heels. And you could rest your head on your hands and then just focus into your breath. Take your breath into the back of your body and then exhale fully, let all the air disappear. One more time. And then take your time to roll up through the spine and come to seated please. Now, if you find sitting on your bottom uncomfortable, then by all means sit on a chair. Um, as long as you're, if you're sitting on a chair, that your feet are flat on the floor um, so that your pelvis is nice and secure. Our spine stays in a lovely long vertical position and we're gonna play place in the hands in what we call a Cossack. So one hand over the top of the other. From here, we're gonna turn the head and allow the spine to follow coming into a waist twist. Breathe in to hold your position, breathe out to untwist, and come back to center. Then go the other way. So we're gonna turn the head and allow the rest of the spine to follow. Breathe in to hold, 
and breathe out to a 10. Keep trying to sit tall. And if you find that your arms just don't like this position, you could have your hands here in like a prayer position and just rest them back against the uh, breastbone. And in fact, this is quite a nice position because it stops your shoulders from getting involved. So we want it all to happen from the waist, creating that lovely rotation up through the spine. Going to go for our last ones. Even yourself up and then release back down. And you're done for today. Well done. I hope you enjoyed it. Any questions or feedback, please send it my way. But other than that, I hope you have a really nice rest of your day. Take care. Bye.